Well, good evening, everyone. God bless you. Welcome to our time of prayer and devotion. We're going to go ahead and uh, get situated and get settled in here. So we can go ahead and share it out as we have uh, begun our live for this evening. I pray you guys are doing well. So let me just get set up here and situated. and uh, We'll go right in and enjoy the presence of God. Uh, welcome, you guys, as I see you guys are joining in. Blessings to everyone on this blessed day. Uh, those that are living in this Chicagoland area, you saw some snowflakes coming down today. Uh, it's typical. Uh, we are not surprised here in this weather here. We were in the 70s last week and down in the 40s this week with snow. So, wow, go figure, huh? We're in Chicago. But nevertheless, God is good. And so as you guys are joining in, I just want to welcome you here. I'm excited to see you guys this evening. God bless everyone. Share it with a friend. Have a great encouraging word for you tonight and in time of prayer. Uh, man, it's been a great week. Uh, we had a great, great time over the Resurrection Weekend celebration. Thank you guys so much for joining in, being a part of a great Resurrection Sunday. We had a great word uh, looking to Jesus. Guys, remember, always look to Jesus. Don't look to the world. Don't look to friends. Don't look to even family. Look to Jesus first. He is our way, right? The Bible says he's the way, the truth, and the life. And so let's always look to Jesus. And so praise God for you again. You guys are tuning in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, hello, everyone. God bless you. Um, it's been great just serving God and we're in, uh, this is four Sundays we have been under this shutdown and it seems like it's been eternity almost, doesn't it? Well, you know what? Praise God that we're still able to communicate. You can see me. Unfortunately, I can't directly see you, but I see you through the camera. So God bless you this evening. Uh, we definitely want to go into God's word tonight and just share some things with you. And so as people are joining in, continue to share it. And we'll begin here in about two minutes. I uh, just want to take some time to just welcome everyone in today and uh, get to a comfortable place. Get to a place where you can best receive from God. Um, you might want to have your note pad out and a pen. Take some notes with your Bible as we're going to be with you for a few minutes here and, and in prayer. But I want you to get to a comfortable place and just thank you guys for allowing me to be in your living room, in your bedroom, in your kitchen, in your family room, or wherever you might be just watching this right now. Thank you guys for allowing me uh, to be with you uh, throughout these last several weeks and into the month now. And so uh, I just want you to be in a nice, relaxed, comfortable place. Uh, block out distractions, block out anything that's going on because God wants to talk directly to you on tonight. God wants to minister to you. He wants to uh, he wants to refresh you. He wants to encourage you. He wants to build you up, strengthen you. And we all need it. Um, you know, as strong as we are, we all need to be encouraged. And so uh, just reach out and encourage someone right now and tell them, hey, you better tune in. Uh, those that might be sick, those that might be down, those that might be under some type of, of situation, get them to tune in right now. You don't want to miss what the Lord is going to have me to share with you tonight. And so I just welcome everyone here. Uh, bless everyone. It is great to see the name scrolling down the list here. And I, I always appreciate the support. I always appreciate the prayers. My wife and I, we're thoroughly encouraged uh, by you guys. And hopefully we're encouraging to you. Uh, here's a hug from me and my wife. God bless you guys much. Uh, you got to do the air hugs right now. And so it's all good. One day things will change. But uh, until then, you guys are still under the blessings of Abraham. And so thank God for you guys tonight. Look at you, you guys are all coming in. Bless all of you. Bless all of you. Uh, I promise tonight's going to be a great encouraging night for you, a great encouraging word. Uh, yes, indeed, it is going to be great, great, great. And so um, if you're ready, I'm almost ready here. My two minutes is up. And so let, let's go into the word tonight. I always like to begin our Tuesdays and Fridays with an encouraging word before we go into prayer time. <clears throat> Prayer is always important. So uh, I know that we're in the midst of this shutdown and uh, we're four weeks strong into it. Now we're over a month into it and it, it may not seem like it, but yes, we are over a month into this. And so we've got to keep each other encouraged and strengthened. I know that we're getting a little antsy. I know that we're, you know, maybe uncomfortable being confined in, in our homes, wherever we are and are not able to move about the cabin like we normally uh, used to could, but that, that's okay. You know, we need to just take this time and continue to encourage each other. Um, and then, but Paul said this in the word of God. He said, in whatever state I find myself, I'm content. And so, you know, we've had some great times and we'll continue to have great times in the future. But right now we're in a different time. We're having great times, but we're in a 
different time of greatness. And so we got to be even content in this time. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the life of a believer. Every day is not always perfect. Every day is not always lined up and everything just, just there's no problem. Yes, we have problems. We have challenges. We have adversity. But Paul said, I know how to abound and be abased. In other words, he is saying, I know how to be hungry. I know how to be full. I know how to be rich. I know how to be poor. I know how to have. I know what it means not to have. But whenever, wherever I find myself in whatever situation, I'm content. And so I want to release just a simple word tonight for you to just simply be content. Don't be anxious for nothing. The Bible says that be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And ladies and gentlemen, don't get anxious. All right. Don't jump the gun. Don't rush out there. Let's continue to, to abide by the rules. Let's continue to stay prayerful. Let's continue to stay in the word. Let's continue to encourage one another. Let's continue to speak well. Let's continue to be a blessing. Let's continue to support each other. God is working through in the midst of all this. And so be encouraged, be content, all right? Learn how to give God thanks in every situation. And so if you're with me tonight, go with me to the book of Galatians chapter number three, just for a few moments, and, and we're going to pray. So remember that word tonight. I know you're anxious. I know you want to get back out and about and doing all this and that, and, but I don't know about you. I, I'm, I'm enjoying times of just refreshing and being uh, comfortable and, and hearing from God. And so be content where you are. Don't rush out there. God's got this, okay? Galatians chapter number three uh, and verse number 12. I'm going to start there, um, verse 11, actually, and we're going to read down uh, to verse number 14. I hope this blesses you tonight. It says this, verse 11, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is any one that hangeth on a tree. Verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Guys, this is an encouraging word tonight. Um, as I was praying, seeking the Lord, God just dropped two uh, words in my spirit today for you, and, and, and I want to share them with you now. But he told me to remind you specifically of two things tonight. Remind you of two things. Number one, the just still lives by faith. Okay, the Bible says there in Galatians 3 and 11, for the just shall live by faith. He told me to remind you specifically, the just still live by faith. So guys, we're still living by faith. We're still walking by faith. We're still speaking faith. We're justified by faith. We have peace with God. There is no animosity and our anger between us and God. We are people of faith. And so I'm pleading with you tonight, don't live in fear. Don't live in doubt. Don't live in worry. The just still live by faith. So whatever you was thinking what's going on, I give you a little bit of admonishment. Don't look at the news too much because it'll have you fearing. It'll have you worrying. It'll have you upset. It'll have you angry. I'm telling you that the Bible tells us the just shall live by faith. What is faith? Faith is believing God even when we don't see know or can touch or even fathom what's going on they just live by what we don't see because what we don't see we know we have it in the realm of the spirit and so faith is that substance right that title deed so we have it even though you might not physically possess it faith says it's already mine faith goes into the heavens faith goes into the heavenly areas and pulls it down inside this earth right now and settles it as sure and so i want to remind you tonight that if you are just right Therefore, being justified by faith, you got peace with God. If you are just, if you are right with God, then our first thing the Lord said to remind you is you still live by faith. Guys, don't lose your faith in the midst of fear. Walk by faith. So let's go a little bit further here. He said, and the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, right? We know that, and we just finished celebrating resurrection season and talking about the cross and how the cross is empty and Jesus hung on that cross. Well, the Bible says that cursed is anyone who hangeth on a tree. He became the curse so that we could be free. And I want to share this with you because it's, it's not that the law was bad because we know that the law led us to Christ. The law led us to a place of understanding that we cannot go any further than where we are. We need help. 
And so God understood that. And so Paul is not saying that the law is bad in of itself, but the law could not fulfill and do what God wanted for us. God wants perfect fellowship with us. God wants us to be able to be and walk with him, not about works, not about what we could do of ourselves to offer God anything. The Bible says our best, best righteousness is like filthy rags. And so I can't offer God anything of myself to earn any type of credence with him. So I got to walk by faith. And many people that walked in that time felt like if I abide by the law and I just do these good works and honor these traditions and, and festivals and feasts and things of man, then I'll gain good credit with God. Well, it's good that you do that, but Jesus came along in the New Testament and he spoke with the rich young ruler and a rich young ruler had did everything, but he couldn't do one thing that Jesus asked him to do. Go and sell all your riches and give to the poor. He couldn't do that, right? So it tells me that you can do all the good works out there that you desire to do, but it don't necessarily guarantee you a seat in heaven. What guarantees your seat is you receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And so Jesus went to the cross and he became the curse from us. He broke down that wall between us and God and he allowed us now to approach God, his throne through his blood. And so I look at verse 13 and it says, Christ has redeemed us from that curse of the law being made a curse for us. He's redeemed us from having to live out the rest of our life trying to work out through works. Now we have faith and our faith is supplied or, or works through the works, right? We now know that no man is justified by the law. That's the word of God. But James tells us that faith without works is dead. I understand that. So now I show you my faith by the works I do. I don't work and then show you my faith. I show you my faith through my works. That's important to understand because works don't come before faith. You receive God by faith and then you work this thing. You live it on out, living by faith, and then those works come through that. And so that's an important word tonight. The first thing you got to remember, please write this down, that we still live by faith. We don't live by stimulus check. Thank God for it. Praise God is here. Praise God. Many of you have gotten it, received it. Thank God. I'm looking for mine too because, yes, it'll help. Death, definitely. But God is working through that. We still live by faith. Faith in God. And so continue to walk by that. There's another part I want to share with you here where I'm going to plan at and then we're going to pray with you. I hope you get this. Verse number 14. Watch this. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Everything we get, everything we have is through faith. Everything that we speak in the body of Christ is through faith. And so, guys, what we do, how we live, how we operate is by faith. And so I want to show you tonight that the blessing of Abraham might come upon those, the Gentiles, us, right, through Jesus Christ because we have faith in him. The second thing the Lord told me to remind you, and I've really come in, into your living room, into your family room, into your kitchen, into your dining room, wherever you are right now, in your basement, in your closet, in your car, wherever you are, please hear me right now and don't ever forget these words. He told me to remind the body of Christ, we are also still blessed. Yeah, I'm going to let it sink in a minute because someone is saying, thank you, Jesus, right now. You needed to hear that. You are still blessed. Wherever you are, whatever you're going through, whatever you're feeling, whatever it looks like, God told me specifically to tell you tonight, you are still blessed. The blessings don't just move because the world has chaos. The blessings actually magnify and increase through the chaotic condition of the world. And so you can expect even greater favor from the Lord in this time. Why? Because God specializes in doing the impossible, ladies and gentlemen. God specializes in doing things that we can't understand and see. And I know there are many things that frustrate us, many things that get us down, many things we're contemplating going through right now. But I want to tell that man, that woman right now, you are still blessed. You know why I know you're blessed? Because you're watching me right now. You know why else I know you're blessed? Because you're breathing the air that God gave you. You know what else I know how you're blessed? Because you're able to do things that others cannot do. You're on this side of life and are able to give God praise and live still for him. You are blessed. And so regardless of the COVID-19 situation we're in right now, as serious as it is, God's blessings is more serious than COVID-19, ladies and gentlemen. And so I choose not to participate in that which is going on in the world. I'm a part of the kingdom of God. 
God. And so I want to prove something to you tonight. If you will, I want to show you. The Bible says in verse 14 in, in Galatians 3, watch, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. So I want to tell you tonight, I want to remind you, you're blessed. Go with me to Genesis chapter number 12, and I got to remind you that if I'm blessed with Abraham, then I want to tell you what your blessings are. I want you to know tonight how blessed you really are. I want to defeat any um, doubt. I want to defeat any type of discouragement that's out there because I've sensed it. I've watched it. I've heard it. And people are getting uncomfortable. They're getting antsy. They're getting frustrated. They want answers. You're hearing uh, bickering. You're hearing a lot of animosity between parties and going forth. And you don't know what to believe. And so God is, is risen up in me to tell you tonight that you're still blessed and we still live by faith. And so it's tired of listening to nonsense and it's time to listen to God sense now, okay? This is God sense for you tonight, not nonsense. The nonsense you could turn off, turn on God sense, all right? Genesis chapter number 12, verse number one. Oh yes, I'm feeling good tonight. Watch. Verse one says, now the Lord had said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land I will show thee. Let's look at the blessings. He said, Abram, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make thee a great nation. Let me pause right now and talk about each blessing. The first thing he told Abram, I'm going to make you a great nation. Ladies and gentlemen, you are great. I want to announce right now, not because of a president, not because of a governor, we are blessed. Our nation is blessed because we're here as women and men of God. We're blessed because we're part of Abraham's seed. And so let's make sure we make this nation blessed again by honoring Jesus Christ. That's that word. So you are blessed. This nation, God is reminding us, guys of the United States of America and even nations abroad, my friends, and internationally, those, I love you. We are blessed. Our nations are blessed. As children of the Most High God, as God told Abram, I'll make thee a great nation. We're of that nation. Gentiles were grafted into the nation, and we are great in the eyes of God. God said, I'll make thee. And so God is saying right now, I made you great. Don't dishonor yourself with what's going on in the world. Number two, he said, and I will bless thee. Hmm. He said, I'll bless thee. He didn't give a long explanation. Well, and, you know, I'll, I'll think about blessing you even though the world's going through COVID. I'll think about blessing you even though the, the economies. No, he said, I will bless thee. God said, I'll bless thee. It doesn't matter if the economy is good or bad. It doesn't matter if we're shut down or opened up. The blessings of the Lord, the Bible said, they make it rich and it addeth no sorrow. So regardless, guys, he said, I will bless thee. And I remind you right now, you are still walking under the Abrahamic covenant. You are blessed going in and blessed coming out, ladies and gentlemen. You are above and not beneath. You are blessed in every area of your life. The blessing is still upon you regardless. You've got to look past what you see now and look through the lenses of God. Remember I told you a minute ago, stop listening to nonsense and listen to God sense. God sense is called faith. God sense is called looking at the word of God and calling things that be not as though they were. Let's go on here. And he said, and thou shalt be a blessing. Ladies and gentlemen, you are still able to be a blessing to many people right now. You don't have to just bless people with money. You can bless people with a word. You can bless people with a smile. You can bless people with love. You are a blessing right now, regardless where you are. Concentrate on being the blessed person that you are. You are not under a curse. The curse was taken. I believe this with my whole heart. That a real believer cannot be under the curse because Jesus became the curse. So I'm not cursed. My money's not cursed. My family, nobody's under that. Why? Because it stopped with us at the cross. That's good news right there. Then verse 3 said, and I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. Bingo. Anybody bless you, they're going to be blessed too. But if they happen to speak something or do something against you, if they curse you, if they go against you, God's going to deal with them. That's why we can't get caught up in the ways of the world and doing things and going at people. Ladies and gentlemen, trust God. Trust God. Trust God. Because God is able to make your enemies be at peace with you. He'll cause you to walk up, so, uh, up top of their head. He'll cause you to prosper in the midst of anything that's going on. God said to Abram, I will bless those that bless you. I will curse them that curse you. Don't worry about what's going on. Don't worry about trying to fix it. Don't worry about trying to solve the problem. God says to you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, live for me. 
I'll take care of those who try to do you wrong. That's just a distraction trying to get you off of what God wants. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be distracted by what's going on in the world right now. This is the time to dial in into the presence of God. This is the time to hit your secret place. This is the time to go into that closet. This is the time to just deny yourself and fall before the Lord and really get some refreshing from God. Repent, go to the closet and receive that time of refreshing. This is the time. God doesn't want you to be distracted by what's going on between political parties, what's going on in the economy, even though as bad as it is, he doesn't want you to get distracted even by how many people are dying and contracting this virus. He wants you to work at being a blessing. Bless those. And those that bless you, he's going to bless them. This is how this thing works tonight. And so let's go on. He says then, and in thee, in verse 3, in thee, shall all families of the earth be blessed. In thee, Abram, all families of the earth are going to be blessed. From the time he spoke it to the time we're living right now, all families ought to be blessed if we belong to Abraham. Ladies and gentlemen, we are blessed. Your household is blessed. Everything concerning your life is under the blessing, not a curse. And so forget about what's going on and stop letting it torment the mind or get you worried about this and worried about that. Yes, use precaution. Yes, use wisdom. Yes, practice safety. Yes, wash your hands. Yes, make sure that you take care of yourself. But no, don't fear. No, don't worry. No, don't live in doubt. No, don't walk around edgy. No, don't walk around as though you're about to break. No, don't do those things. You walk by faith, not by sight. Remember, the just still live by faith and you are still blessed. That's what, what God wanted me to tell you tonight. That's exactly what God said. He took me through the scriptures and he talked to me as plainly, as clearly as I'm talking to you tonight. And so if you hear me right now, ladies and gentlemen, Still live by faith. As hard as it get, let your faith even increase. And even in the realm of thinking that you're under a curse, no, you're not. If you belong to Jesus Christ, he took the curse at the cross. You are not under a curse. You have perfect fellowship with God through the Holy Spirit. Now you can come to God. You can come boldly to the throne of grace right now. And you can get mercy and find grace to help in your time of need. Guys, you're blessed. And so choose not to participate in the world's chaos. Choose not to participate in the world's bickering back and forth. Let's be a part of the solution, not a part of the problem. Problem people are the ones that keeps up contamination. They keep up confusion. They keep up discord. They keep up the gossip. That's a problem. A solution says, hey, where is God in this? Hey, what does Jesus say? Hey, what does the word say? Let we hear. Can we pray? Let's pray about that. Let's hear from God right now. Let's be a part of what God wants us to do. Be a solution to someone that is suffering through COVID-19 right now. Be a solution to maybe uh, those that maybe have lost loved ones. Be a blessing. Be, be encouragement to someone right now that might be out there that don't know Jesus walking in fear. Let's now lift each other up by being a blessing instead of a curse. Let's now talk about the favor of God. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of hearing about the negativity of what's going on in the world. What is God doing right now? What is God saying right now? Someone tell me how God is blessing the church right now. Someone tell me how God is repositioning us for greatness right now. Someone tell me how God has spoken and God is releasing and raising up a fresh batch of believers in his end time that's going to do the work of the kingdom of God. Someone tell me how blessed we are walking on this earth right now and giving God glory, honor, and praise. Those are the things, ladies and gentlemen, I want to hear. I don't want to hear anymore about the complaints about our government. I don't want to hear anymore about the complaints about this virus and about healthcare systems and about it's just, you know, a ploy to get. No, let's talk about what God is doing now. Let's shift. Let's change conversations. Let's change dialogue now. Let's change and start speaking what God wants us to say and what God wants us to have. I'm not ignoring the problem. The problem exists, but it don't mean I got to receive the problem into my heart and let it bother me and mess my life up. No, we're going to speak that we're still just and we're walking by faith and we're still under the blessing of Abraham and we're releasing blessings and we're walking under the favor of God right now. So what I like to do right now is I like to pray with you. I'd like to spend our next few minutes in prayer with you right now because I believe someone needs this encouraging word, but you also need to be a part of this encouraging prayer. 
And so tag someone right now and tell them he's getting ready to pray. He's getting ready to seek God on your behalf. He's seeking God on our behalf. He's seeking God right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I come right now in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, and through the great work of Calvary of Jesus right now. And we declare in Jesus' name that we are just and we're walking by faith. God, we are walking under the blessing of Abraham. It is still good for us right now. And Lord, I declare right now in the name of Jesus that in the land in which we live. Lord, you are returning us back to greatness, oh God. I know many have said, make our nation great again. Our nation is always great. It's been great because Jesus, you paid the price and there are still believers on this earth. And so it's great in you, God, not great in any man, but it's great in you, God. And we thank you tonight that Lord, you are hearing the prayers of the righteous, that fervent, effectual prayer, and it's availing much. And Lord God, I know and I see, Lord God, that things are changing and yet there is a fight. There is a struggle. And so, Lord, I speak right now in Jesus' name into this atmosphere. Lord, a word of faith. Let faith arise. Let faith come alive. Let faith now, God, be established in our heart right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we forbid any negative things in our life. We forbid any negative conversations, any negative talk. We forbid right now all the works of darkness, anything that tries to torment our mind. We forbid right now anything that's working against our faith. We forbid right now any unrighteous, unclean thing that tries to come and enter into these portals of our eyes or our ears or our mouth. Father, we forbid right now any works of the devil. Lord, we are hearing the Holy Spirit right now. We come into agreement that the just still live by faith. Lord, we will not deny our faith by entertaining doubt, Lord God. But Lord, we are just because Jesus made us right on the cross. And so Father, we declare by faith tonight that we live by faith. We walk by faith. We move by faith, God. Everything we do is by faith. And I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that your people right now are being encouraged right now in their faith. God, they're looking to the hills from which come at their help. God, they're looking past the government. They're looking past the confusion. They're looking past the sickness. They're looking past the virus. They're looking past everything, God, and we see Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost, right now for allowing us to see Jesus in the midst of this shutdown. Thank you, Holy Ghost, right now, for allowing us to find hope in the midst of chaos. Thank you, Holy Spirit, right now, for allowing us to move in the place of a surety and stableness, Lord God. Even when the world seems uncertain, Father, you are a stable God, and we are a stable people, a stable church. We shall not be moved, God, by any situation or circumstance. We will only be moved by our faith, and our faith says it is finished. Our faith said the work is done. Our faith says that we are more than overcomers. Our faith says that we are conquerors in the name of Jesus. And Father, I re-announce and announce right now upon your people the blessing over their life. Just as we've spoken in Genesis chapter number 12 and verses 1 through 3, God, we reiterate the blessing over your people's life tonight, Lord God. Lord, we're not under a curse, Lord God. We're operating under the blessings of Abraham, Lord God. Father, we are blessed with good old faithful Abraham. And God, I thank you right now that, Lord God, this time, this season is not going to diminish or destroy or disrupt or distract our blessing. Father, our eyes are upon you, Lord God. Lord, we remove our eyes, Lord, off of the TV, off of the news, and we put it upon you you. Lord God, we are blessed, Lord God, in every area of our life, Lord. I speak the encouraging word of blessedness right now. Lord, let the blessings begin to enter the heart and the mind and overtake any other thought that's been trying to dominate, Lord God. Let the blessings flow right now, Lord God, through any negative situation. Father, I announce that even as you were faithful to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Lord, you made covenant with them, God. It is still good with us today. And so, Father, we walk in our inheritance right now. Lord God, God, our inheritance is still sure and good in you. And so, Father, in whatever state we find ourselves in, we are content. As we said earlier, Lord God, we know, know how both to be abased and how to abound. We know how to suffer lack when we know how to suffer, Lord God, need. But, Lord, we know how to be prosperous. We know how to be hungry. We know how to be full. Yet, in anything, we found out that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. And so, God, tonight, let there be strength even as I'm praying, Lord God. 
Let there be strength, Lord God, even as, Lord, the intercessors are, Lord, on the wall. Lord God, let there be strength right now to those that are watching, to those that are going to watch. Let there be, Lord God, strength that arises in that inner man, Lord God. Father, I break up the fallow ground of confusion, Lord God. I break up, Lord God, the hardness of heart, Lord God. I break up anything, God, that has been working against the grain of the Holy Ghost. Father, I loose right now in Jesus' name peace and joy and favor in that household right now. Father, the blessings are still good upon us. God, we reach up, we receive it, and we grab it right now. Lord, we expect greatness. We expect for you to come through. We expect for you to make a way in the wilderness and in the desert, Lord God. We expect for you to open up doors, Lord God. We expect for you, Lord God, to release favor in times that, Lord, there don't seem to be no favor. God, even in the midst of pestilence, of famine, Lord God, the man Isaac sold, Lord God, and in that same year, he reaped a hundredfold return. And so, Father, I will speak it right now that we begin to reap a hundredfold return of the seed of joy that we sowed, of the seed of faith that we sowed, of the seed that we've sown right now, God. We will not be denied, Lord God, our place of blessedness, Lord, even though we're in the midst of this serious situation Lord God, yet we will not be discouraged and we will not be overcome. Lord, we overcome all evil with good tonight, Father God. So we speak good of our nation. We speak good of our leaders. We speak good of those that serve in those high offices, Lord God. We announce blessings right now in the name of Jesus. God, raise up the leaders, oh God, that will honor you and bless you, oh God. Lord, we bless our nations, oh God. We bless our cities, oh God. We bless our states tonight, God. We bless our churches, oh God. We bless the men and women of God. God, all over tonight, God. May the blessing, Lord God, begin to increase, Father, even as we're praying, Lord God. May blessings come and overtake the body of Christ, Lord God. Let us never lose sight, Father, of how good you've been to us, Lord God. Lord, we have served you in the good times, and even though this time is not as good as what we like, we still serve you with the same enthusiasm, God. We still serve you with the same joy, passion, and pleasure, Lord God, because you called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. And so in the midst of this dark world, we are still light, Father God, and I thank you tonight in Jesus' name that your sons and daughters are rising up, and God, we are moving forward in you. Lord, we are full steam ahead. We release the limitations right now. God, we release, Lord God, all the things that have been working against us. Lord, let joy arise even as I'm praying, and the enemy will scatter. Father, I speak joy right now. God, even into the families that are suffering loss, that are going through, Lord God, the situations of family members being contracted with the virus, God, even those that have lost loved ones. Father, I'm praying right now in Jesus' name that the joy of the Lord becomes their strength, God. I'm praying right now, God, that they would arise right now, even in the midst of the hardest time. And Lord, even as you said, I will bless those that bless thee to Abram. Father, bless them, Lord God, as they are a blessing to others, Lord God. Give them courage. Give them confidence, stamina to rise up, Lord God, and to do the work of the kingdom of God. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I pray for strength. God only comes from you, Lord God. Strength for those that are continuing to work in dangerous situations, Lord God. Strength for those, Lord God, that are putting their life in harm's way, Lord God. Strength for those, Lord God, that are going out not even thinking about their own life, but serving others. Father, I speak right now an angelic covering over their lives in Jesus' name. I speak right now, Lord God, a hedge of protection around them in the name of Jesus. Father, it is not your will, Lord God. You did not do this, Lord God. And so, Father, we stand on your word right now by faith that we agree that it is, Lord, done. It is finished. We are healed, Lord God. This virus is done, and we speak it right now, God. And, Lord God, as your word has stated, you'll allow what we allow. You forbid what we forbid. Lord God, now we allow the peace to overtake us. We allow the joy to overtake us. We allow, God, your anointing to overtake us right now, and we forbid from this day forward doubt to come up in our mindset. We forbid from this day forward to ever live by fear. We will live and continue to live by faith and not by sight, Lord God. We will always speak of the blessings over our life, Lord God. We are not under a curse. We're not being cursed because of this. We are part of the body of Christ, and we are not and cannot be under a curse. And I thank you right now in Jesus' name that we have a new mind. We have a new heart. We have a new way of thinking. We have a new way of handling this situation. Lord God, we have joy. And Father, we release that over the airway right now. We release that into the social media world right now. 
Lord, I speak a word of unity that we all would come together and speak the same thing. Joy, peace, happiness right now. God, I thank you that we will stay continually as one. We will encourage one another and strengthen one another. And we'll be one in you. And Father, we, again, we just pray that hedge of protection continually around our lives. And we thank you tonight, God. Because again, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and it addeth no sorrow. God, I thank you even for bringing this world to a halt. Lord God, for suspending everything. Every idol that man worshipped, they can't worship now. Because God, you want them to see you. And so Father, our prayer tonight is that people across the face of this world would begin to see you again. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you've made your church safe and secure. But to that world out there that might be listening, to someone that might be watching, find God, allow God in. Father, I thank you that we have no other alternative, no other outlet but to turn to you. And so God, may Lord the world turn back to you, not just making the United States great again, but the body of Christ great in your eyes. Father, our prayer tonight is that we will continue to be men and women of faith and not doubt or fear. Our prayer tonight, God, is that we will never lose sight of who we are in Christ Jesus. You said it, Paul, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. You made it very clear that we are have been made right through the blood of Jesus, and we are the righteousness of God in him. Thank you tonight that we, we've been reconciled back to God. We are right. And because we are right, we have every right to the inheritance that God gave us. And Lord God, we receive it tonight and we thank you. No more conversating of the negativity. No more complaining of what's going on. Lord God, but thanking you for what you are doing. Speaking, Lord God, blessings in the atmosphere. Father, may that heart, mind be settled tonight. May we be affixed in you that this too shall pass, has passed, and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I hope you receive that tonight. Please share that with someone. This is important that we come together as the body of Christ and not deny ourselves. I know the Bible tells us to not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. And while we can't be in one place under the same building, we can still come together in this Facebook Live setting and still assemble. And that's what I want to encourage us to do tonight is to still assemble ourselves together as the body of Christ, guys. Encourage one another. Remember my words, guys. We are still people of faith that just still live by it. All right? And you're still blessed. And so be an encouragement to someone. I love you. I'll be back with you tomorrow evening for our midweek service at 7 p.m. Uh, there's going to be, God is causing a, a, a shift. And I'm going to take you into uh, a kind of a shift, a paradigm shift, what God is doing in the church, um, how things are different and how God is going to be flowing. And so you don't want to miss this because this involves all of you. It really does. And I'm excited to share it with you guys because I know you're going to be blessed from it. And so please share this word. Please come out tomorrow evening and just get to that place and, and get ready to receive what God has for you. Uh, I'm encouraged. I hope you're encouraged. Remember, I love you with the love of Jesus and keep your eyes on the promise. Don't concentrate on TV. Don't concentrate on the news. Don't concentrate on, on the going back and forth. Stay focused on God. Okay? So until I see you tomorrow, confess that we're blessed, we're prosperous, we're healthy, and we're wealthy. And all the blessing of Deuteronomy 28 are mine. If you haven't already, in case you forgot, you can go back on YouTube and you can go back to some of our older messages. Again, I preached a whole series about the blessings of Deuteronomy 28. Some, someone needs to go back and re-listen to that. It was a series of about three or four messages. If you go back the last month or so, and you can just go back on our YouTube page. If you haven't subscribed, go and look us up and subscribe to Faith Walk Harvest Center, guys, and get that word inside of you. Yeah, on Facebook, please like us, follow us, so that you can get instant notifications when we're going live, You know, and that way we can be together, all right? So we love you, and remember, we walk by faith and not by sight. I will see you tomorrow night. God bless you.